My name is Moji and welcome to another tutorial. I'm going to show you how to set up your WASI gate. If you haven't heard about WASIOP technology, head over to wasiop.io website and get more information. So, first we have to flash our Raspberry Pi. We go to wasiop.io slash downloads and download the latest SD card image. We use Etcher tool to flash the downloaded image on SD card. You can download it from uh, its website balena.io and install it on your machine. So let's select the image. We insert SD card into our PC then we select it here. and we hit the flash button. On my machine it asks for password. Now we wait for it. Okay, we are done here. Now we put the SD card into our Raspberry Pi and turn it on. Set up Wi-Fi. When we boot up the Raspberry Pi with WASIGATE firmware for the first time, it puts the Pi on Wi-Fi hotspot mode. So, on our PC, we should see a wireless network that starts with WASIGATE underline some numbers. Let's connect to it. The default password is LoRa Gateway. Okay, now we are connected to our Pi. So, now we go to our browser and write default IP address of uh, WASIGATE hotspot in the address bar, which is 192.168.200.1. Okay, here is the main dashboard. On the left side, we see multiple options to control our WASIGATE. Let's click on settings. Here at the corner there is an internet indicator which periodically checks the internet connectivity. At the moment it shows a warning sign because our gateway is not connected to the internet. If we click on it, it checks the connectivity right now. Here we see information about Ethernet connection. If we connect our WASI gate to a local network through an Ethernet cable, uh, the connection information appears here. Here we see the Wi Fi information. And here we see the blackout protection indicator. If your Pi suddenly turns off, for example, due to a blackout, there is a good chance that your SD card gets corrupted and the Pi won't boot up again. So, on the new WASI hat, we designed a protection circuit that shuts down the Pi gracefully in case of a power outage. If your Pi has such an option, this indicator shows it here. And here we can shut down or restart our WASI gate. In this section, we can see and control the local time of our gateway. All data collected from the sensors are stored and synced with the cloud using UTC time. However, since WASIGATE is an edge capable platform, we need to set a local time in order to be able to use it in the apps running locally on the edge. Let's connect our WASIGATE to Wi Fi network. Here is a list of wireless networks that WASIGATE can see. I click on my local network, type my password, and hit the connect button. WASIGATE is trying to connect to the Wi-Fi that we selected. Because we use Wi-Fi hotspot to access uh, the dashboard, as soon as we hit the connect button, we lose the control of our WASIGATE. If you have a WASI hat with an OLED display, you can see the connection is set on the OLED display. Uh, we see it is checking if the Wi-Fi credential uh, was correct. Now it's showing the Wi-Fi status, we wait. 
and all right it is connected to our local wi-fi please note that if wasigate cannot connect to the local wi-fi due to any reason being run credential or crowded network anything it rolls back to the hotspot mode it takes some time but it rolls back to the hotspot mode if you have a wasi hat with wi-fi push button you can hold the button for three seconds to force wasigate to go hotspot mode at any time if we do not have an OLED display to know the status of the WASI gate, we have to either use an HDMI screen like this. Or we have to scan our local network to see if the Pi is connected to our local router. Okay, let's find the IP address with Angry IP Scanner. One of the tools that help us to find the IP address of our Raspberry Pi is Angry IP Scanner. We go to its website, angryip.org, download and install it on our machine. Okay. Now we open it. By default, it shows a range of addresses which include your IP address. If you use another network interface, that shares a connection with your Pi, just select that one. It scans the entire address range to find the live machines. Then it finds the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's find the IP address with Nmap. This is what I try on a Linux machine, which should be similar to a Mac machine as well. This might be different on Windows machine. First, we connect to the same network that our Raspberry Pi is expected to be connected to. Then we simply find the IP address of our own machine with this ifconfig. To do a simple scan on a local network, we just write nmap the IP address of our machine we have to finish it with zero we have to remove the latest number and write zero then slash 24. now we can see um, it found our raspberry pi in the network and here is its ip address we just copy this ip address and paste it in our browser and voila here is the dashboard as we can see, our WASI gate is connected to our local Wi-Fi. Okay, WASI gate config. Here is the configuration panel. We see four sections. In the access point mode, we can switch our WASI gate to access point mode. And please pay extra attention as we are using Wi-Fi network to control our gateway to access our gateway and the Wi-Fi module on Raspberry Pi cannot be on both modes at the same time I mean Wi-Fi mode, client mode and hotspot mode if we switch to access point mode we will lose the control and we have to either connect to the hotspot provided by WASIGATE or we just use an ethernet cable or we just use an HDMI screen with keyboard and mouse which is the last option to have control on our gateway here we can change the default credential of the access point network it is recommended to change it here we can see uh, the local time zone for our WASI gate by default it's automatic which tries to find the local time zone uh, by the IP on the internet if it's connected to internet it can find it you can leave it as it is if your gateway is like you move your gateway a lot here and there otherwise you can just set it to the time zone that you want in this section we can set a trigger temperature for the WASI gate cooling fan well if your gateway uses a fan to cool it down you can set it here And here we can set the timeout for the OLED display on WASI gate, which for example turns off the OLED after 60 seconds. Obviously if your gateway doesn't have an OLED or fan, these settings do nothing. WASI gate maintenance. 
Under the maintenance menu, we can see a number of options. Please note that these features are for advanced users. If you don't know what are these, do not change anything here. Okay, here is the resource panel. We can see how much resources our Raspberry Pi is consuming. For example, CPU usage, memory usage, disk usage, actually SD card, and CPU temperature. Down here we see a histogram chart of the resource usage. We can turn off and on these items. Here we can see the available Docker containers and their status. We can stop and start them and see their latest status. This feature is also useful for the app developers to see how their app is doing, how the containers are doing. The next panel is logs. Here we can see all the logs generated by each container which is a very useful feature for debugging and maintenance. Well, that was an overview of the system setting. Managing Wasigate apps. In this panel, we can see the installed apps on our Wasigate. Here we see the update buttons are fading in and out. That means Wasigate is checking for new updates for this specific app. If new update is available for an app, this button gets highlighted. Click on the setting button of an app. Here we can see some details about how the app is doing. It is running. We can see its current version, author, the health, uh, restart policy, and a short description. Since this is a system app, all the buttons are disabled by the update button. We can check for updates. This app, Wasigate Edge, is actually the core of Wasigate. And you can update it just as shown. In a regular app setting panel, we can configure it the way that we need. For example, we can set the restart policy for the app to tell Wasigate what to do if it reboots or the app fails, for example. If you want your app to be running always no matter what, you just set the restart policy to always. We can start or stop an app by clicking these buttons. To install a new app, click on this plus button. Here we see uh, the Wasigate App Store which lists the available apps we installed on the gateway. These apps can be provided by either WasiUp team or a third party who uh, designed an app for WasiGate. To install an app, simply click on install button, then click on download and install. Uh, it downloads the required files and installs it on our WasiGate. In this black box, we can see the installation logs. Make sure you have internet connectivity on your gateway. Depending on our internet connection, it might take some time. Okay, all right. The app is installed successfully. Now we need to launch it by clicking here. Okay, the app appears in the installed apps. And if we refresh the dashboard, we can see it in the menu. Although some apps might not have any menu and UI, they, they might work just in the background. Now we click on this app to see what it does. As we can see, this app adds a new functionality to our WASI gate. It shows us a list of available sensors on board with their values. This app is specifically designed for this. Here there is a CPU temperature which can be found by default on any Raspberry Pi. And here there is a SI7021 sensor which is mounted on my WASI hat in order to monitor the relative humidity and temperature of the gateway. 
This will come handy when uh, we deploy our WASI gate in a remote area and we want to know the ambient humidity and temperature of our gateway. We can make our own app that uses these sensor values and uh, for example push them to the cloud or trigger an actuator if the values hit a particular threshold. Let's go back to the app manager. Here we can see how our newly installed app is doing. If we want this app to be running always, we set the restart policy to always. Let's go for another app. As we can see this app is written in Python, so it doesn't matter which language the app is written in. The app has to follow a number of instructions to be able to communicate to Wasigate, Edge platform and other apps. Let's install it quickly. Alright, it is installed and we can see it here in the menu. This is just a sample app to show developers how to make a new app. At the moment, there are samples available in Golang and Python. To uninstall an app, we go to App Manager and hit the Uninstall button. If we uninstall an app with Keep Config option on, Wasigate keeps the app data and configurations. So if we later install the app again, uh, we do not lose any data that previously stored by the app. Be careful, this action is irreversible. If we remove any data, we cannot recover it. Okay, the app is uninstalled. Sync data with a cloud. Here in the synchronization, we can configure our WASI gate to communicate the collected data to the cloud. Well, uh, my gateway is already configured. I have to switch it off first. Here we write the address of our cloud. If you don't have your own deployed WASI gate, just leave it as it is. Here we write the email address that we use to create an account on WASI Up Cloud dashboard. And here we write the password of that account. If you do not have an account, just head over to dashboard.wasiup.io and create uh, one account just by clicking on the register link. When we click on Active Sync, if the credential is correct and the gateway belongs to our account or doesn't have any owner, then it connects and syncs perfectly. Thank you.